Hey, what is going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I'm here with my friend Chris here. So I'm gonna be shadowing Chris for the day, talking about auto detailing and how to start this business, how much you make with this business, and uh, everything related to that. So it should be a pretty interesting video. Um, if you guys like seeing this type of like in real life type content, go ahead and drop a like on this video just so I know. Um, but yeah, I'll probably uh, have Chris do an intro maybe in his car or something as we're as we're moving along here So uh, looking forward to showing this to you guys first thing I want to ask you is can you just maybe explain You know what it is that your business is what it is you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis So I detail cars inside and out I polish paint I make the interiors look clean again And I'm basically traveling out of my car to a client's location or a dealership's location and just wash the car wax it you know sometimes I do some ceramic coating and that's basically my day is I spend my day in the car traveling to people's houses and, and with dealerships to get the cars it's worth my drive too because you get to see all the cool scenic drives and I like being in the car and then when you get there it's rewarding to like be at that beautiful place and be able to do someone's car see their house I like to ask a lot of questions how did you get you know to where you are in your career and, and kind of pick people's brains because yeah that's, that's really cool to like ask people and I've always done that too anytime when I was younger if I saw somebody driving a Lamborghini or something as a kid I'd go up to them and be like what what do you do to afford this car yeah you know so I guess my question now would be what kind of costs are associated with like starting up an auto detailing business and I know the way you do it with the mobile detailing business is a lot less overhead because you're pretty much doing it at the customer's garage right yeah so I've had a couple different scenarios where I've been doing this business where I did have overhead I had $1,100 at one shop um, I've been with di different partners at different shops right now I'm doing it mobile I do have one small garage if I say needed a place I store some tools there that's only 250 a month for my small garage for me that's like one detail out of the 30 days of the month that I have to put aside for that and then other than that it's, it's chemical costs vacuums pressure washers hoses but I found a lot of the ways to eliminate all those extra stuff that sometimes people think they need when they get into this business there's a lot of info on how to start a detail business that says you need 30 products um, I probably used under 10 wow. and um, I've, I've kind of perfected what I'm buying and, and how much I'm spending on what I, what I get that's great yeah so as far as detailing goes I'm sure there's multiple different packages but um, like what like it, give me an example of one of your packages maybe your most popular one like how much are you charging what are your costs with that? And then like, how much are you making as a profit? So my average uh, detail is anywhere between 150 to $250 based on the size of the vehicle and the condition it's in. And I probably pay under $3 in chemical costs and then whatever my driving fuel is to that destination. Wow, so this is probably like 90% plus profit margin type business. It's all sweat money. Yeah, literally. that's so, great, man, yeah. I try to make anywhere between 250 to uh, 400 dollars a day if i can but 250 would be like the least amount i'd like to make in a day if i'm working five days a week wow that's pretty good all right so we're on our way to the first detail now um and what kind of cars this guy got um i think we're probably gonna be working on a purple wide body porsche 911 okay and then possibly an audi s7 some there's a range rover too i'm not sure what he has in store for me but this is a good customer of mine that um he asks me to do a lot of work on his vehicles. Last time I did, he brought him out to um, Toronto for a car show and won a couple trophies. So now we're gonna polish them up again, make sure they're still looking good. All right, we're at uh, my buddy Wideout's house. Uh, he's got a couple cars here. We're not sure what we're working on today. This is his 09 Porsche 911 wide body. This is a 2017 Audi S7. And I think it's a 08 Range Rover. So one of these three or all three of these are going to get some work done to them. They were worked on a couple weeks ago and you got some trophies over at uh, Import Fest in Toronto the day after. So it makes me feel pretty good and it's good to be back here doing some more work on these cars. them looking a little better especially before winter comes and we're gonna get all the salt in it so give it a good refresh and then it's got a little more time to pick up more dirt and then get done again but be this car as well and also the purple Porsche and 
show you some of the tools that I use. Really simple sets of brushes, but they all have their own purpose. Just generic toothbrushes, large handled scrub brushes, and then I've got some other ones that are rubber for getting in little tight spots and other things with felt on them to get, you know, dash fence, things like that. So it's more like having the right tool. All my job is is moving my hand left to right and knowing which product and which tool to be doing it with. So once you figure out all that stuff, I really carry a light package. It's a couple brushes, a bag full of towels, a bottle of cleaner, and then polishers for the outside. And you said the buffer was like the most expensive thing you bought? This would be one of the most expensive. It's uh, the Rupes. Um, this polisher cost me like 400 something bucks. Then with pads and everything came out to be a little over 500, but I'll tell you it's honestly makes my job a lot easier. I used to use $60 polishers and take hours doing stuff, but that's a lot quicker than any one I've ever used. So I guess it's worth it for me buy something like that. So what would you say your all-in cost is here on like getting started with like it, like the very basics of detailing? When I first started the business two years ago, uh, I probably got into it with about $380. That's including a pressure washer, a buffer, a vacuum, extension cords, towels, polishers, and a set of chemicals like glass cleaner, all-purpose cleaner, and degreaser, and soap. Um, I've had more expensive tools. I've got new ones, old ones, blah, 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 but like now, I'm probably rolling around in my car with an under $400 setup still. Just to start off, we just pulled the mats out of the car. We're gonna start taking out all the, the dirt first. That's the first thing you wanna do is get all the hard stuff up. Kind of get an idea of what you're looking at without all you know stuff from your dirt on your feet. You know what I mean? Because once you take out the mats, vacuum it up, it really just comes down to looking at the surfaces, picking which product to use, which tool to use, and how to get it off. So I like to start with you know, vacuum first, get the heavy dirt off. Start to see the light at the end of the tunnel right away, you know what I mean? This is a two-seater, four-seater, and then we got the yeah, the big truck, so. What do you think time-wise you have between the three of these it'll um, take? To be honest, it's probably gonna really take you like a half hour to do this one, maybe less. Same with the Audi, and then the truck might take me 45 to an hour to do. Mm -hmm. So for three interiors, it's not a bad time frame, two hours. Got my travel time here, but um, you know, it's worth it to come out here. I come out here often, take care of some of these. And what do you usually charge for like this level of detail per vehicle? So on a vehicle like this, we're going to charge anywhere about like 250 for a full detail. So for just the interiors, it might be like 100 to 125 depending on condition. He's got three cars and I come here often, so I work out a nice price with him. All right, so what do we got going on right now? So I wanted to make some extra room in my car. I left the vacuum at home. Most places I go, like uh, I know he has a vacuum here. Some of the dealerships have a vacuum but you don't have the right heads. So I'm just gonna tape this one on. It's a little trade secret here, <laughs> a little duct tape action. Just gotta make sure there's no air. Enough duct tape will fix it anyway. got custom floor mats in it that are the same stitching as the seat. They actually slide up underneath the plastic. So every part of the carpet is pretty much protected, which makes cleaning it awesome. It's like really thick, durable leather. Hard to scratch, hard to really rip, but it looks great. It's quality matching the seat. So for me, that makes my life a lot easier. We've got the Audi logos in it, the stitching all on there, and then it's just striped, but it's all one unimat. So I gotta roll the other seat forward, pull the thing out, it's huge, but it's awesome. So this car was sitting outside and the wind took a, a tent that was held down by five pound weights up in the air and just scuffed the car. We just got some of it out on the door that we didn't think might come out. So we're gonna show you guys buffing on these marks to try and get them out. So what do you think you get it out? Um. I wasn't sure, but I think it's an improvement. That's what we've decided. With what we did on the door to here now, I'll shine my phone light on it again just so you can see. It looks better to the naked eye, but if you get up close, you can really tell that something did happen. Here's some of the mark. 
But again, it's on the roof of an SUV, so we made it look better. I wouldn't say it's completely gone, but I'd say that's that's a fix. <laughs> Yeah. It goes on tap, it has those two little eyes on tap. This is a slant nose conversion. Uh, so it's got like the old like 935, 930 slant nose heritage styling. So uh, is this normally part of your detailing experience? No. This is why I have to clean the cars off. This is why you're employed? Love and hate to see it at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Fucking peg Oh, it's just the out. one tire? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, look at the amount of plastic. Oh damn, that's pretty bad. I'm gonna need that poor tire. That tire's basically shot now or what? Not quite. She's good. I'll tell you what's not shot. My career. <laughs> this keeps you in business. All right, so we're just finishing up for the day, and it's one of my favorite parts about doing mobile detailing. Gotta include that. Day's over, finally get to enjoy a beer, and also this beautiful sunset at a beautiful location. So with what I do, I go to a new place almost every day, sometimes repeat pit places, but it's, it's great to see how other people live, their properties, their homes, and their vehicles. Salute. So, this is Logan. Follow him on Instagram. He's wide out, and he's got all these cool cars you've seen today. Ah, they're trash.